broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, thanks for coming out for uh, XF Running's webinar on the five S's on how to run injury-free. My name is Anthony Bronzo. We're going to be hearing from our head coach today, Andy Flory, and uh, I'll come back at the end and help answer some questions. But uh, Andy, you there? I am there, Anthony. All right, take I it away. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate the uh, intro. Um, see, we've got a few people on the line here tonight. Um, hopefully, uh, you get to learn some things today. And uh, and we have uh, some good offers for you at the end of the uh, session here tonight. Um, hopefully, you can hear me okay. Um, not hey, David, I, I just got a, I got a message here that uh, your screen's not showing. You might have to hit show my screen. All right. Boom. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> yep, got it. Can you see it now? It looks good. Okay, cool. All right. Sorry about that, people. You should be seeing a uh, now a guy who's uh, holding his hamstring, it looks like. So, um, Anyway, just a little bit of a brief uh, rundown on, on tonight. Hopefully we can get through this uh, not too slowly, but also not too fast for you guys. Um, brief uh, description on myself. Uh, born and raised in England, uh, ex-pro uh, soccer player uh, over there, and uh, I'm now living in the States, been over here for the last 11 years. Um, and absolutely love it, so I'm looking to stay. and. Uh, Basically, what happened to me is I uh, I, I ended my uh, soccer career after many many uh, injuries. Um, I had five knee surgeries, two groin replacements, uh, an ankle break, and and any time I tried to run, it was just unbearable pain all over. And uh, decided to hang up my boots and uh, I started to run again, um, just out of the curiosity of uh, loving <clears throat> being outside and, and running as far as I could and getting away from. And the hustle and bustle of life, and uh, and after uh, after running, you know, certain distances, you know, my knees would just be, be aching, my ankles would be, you know, my hurting all over, etc. My back and my lower back would be in pain, and my hips, and basically everything in my body. But uh, I then uh, started to, you know, think about it, and you know, why why I was in pain, why certain points in my body were hurting, and I thought, you know, let's let's research this, and uh, there must be a way out there that was uh, it was better for me to run than you know these injuries that I that happened before and, and certain uh, certain sports weren't going to stop me from uh, from running again. So you know after going around the world and 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 I basically sought out the the best coaches and the best of the best uh, when it came to coaching and running really. And I went around the world and uh, and and I and I looked at uh, certain coaching methods throughout the years. Um, and that is when I really uh, found out basically what the wow factor in my life was right now, and uh, and that is that running is a skill, and kind of never occurred to me until you know I started researching it and uh, and actually using my common sense for once and my brain, and uh, and I uh, I actually sat down with uh, the pose uh, guru uh, Dr. Nicholas Romanoff for a long, long time and worked with him for for an extended period of time. And if you don't know anything about the pose running method, um, and that's you know, not what I'm going to be talking about tonight, but uh, he uh, started out back in the way, and uh, Dr. Nicholas Romanoff is from uh, Russia, Russian scientist, uh, incredibly clever, one of the, the most clever pr persons I've ever met in my life, and um, if not the, and he can basically track down and, and break down running into its equation form, and it's quite incredible what he's done. Um, and he is the uh, founder of uh, Pose Running. And you know, like I said, I went with him for a while and uh, learned off of him, and you know, worked with Scott Jorick, the you know ultra running legend, and uh, also I've worked with uh, the eccentric calendar character known as uh, Barefoot Ted. You know those guys from uh, the book Born to Run. If you haven't read it, great book. Um, and also have worked lastly my mentor Lee Saxby and for me he's probably the best out there um, again he was uh, 
I think the first to learn under uh, Dr. Romanoff, but he's took it onto another level, and uh, me and him are good friends now. And he, he, if you, if you, if you don't know Lee, look him up. Fantastic guy. He's from England as well. That's not the reason, but uh, he, uh, he knows his stuff. That's for sure. And uh, and so after working with those guys, um, you know, I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, how it came to be that these guys knew the reason why you know I was I was running injured and and no one else in the world did so um, you know I looked into it even more and more and then found out that you know that everyone was wrong really and uh, they, these guys were right and it was kind of baffling to me that you know only such a certain uh, population of the world understands that running is a skill and we need to learn uh, basically how to do it and uh, start from scratch again so um, you know, I, I I then moved on to uh, you know doing ultra marathons after kind of building my strength up, etc. And we're learning a little bit more about that tonight. But you know, I went on the ultra marathons, marathons, uh, triathlons. Um, really enjoyed doing all of that. You know, winning some events and uh, and moved into actually uh, the uh, the retail world of it as well, and uh, being the head coach of a a little store up in Seattle called Born to Run, uh, actually not from the book, but kind of has the same name. But um, you know, and there was a minimalist shoe store. They and I was a head coach there, and I worked with thousands of runners that would just come in injured every day, and 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 again not understand why they're injured, and they were jumping on the the wagon of uh, the minimalist way, and just uh, they wanted uh, they wanted some answers. Um, and realistically, there is no uh, wrong or right answer for everybody. Everyone is different, and uh, and so after uh, after spending a couple of years at uh, the retail store, I, uh, Alfie and I decided uh, we needed a we needed a break from that, and we found that there was so many people who were were injured and looking to learn and and uh, and just basically you know wanting to to just run faster or run longer run just injury free and so we uh, went off and uh, started our own adventure and that's where we're at tonight so um, <clears throat> again from wherever you're uh, at tonight hopefully the weather is as nice as it is here in Seattle 80 degrees and lovely so um, and that's about all it is for me so <laughs> moving on uh, just gonna go through a few quick uh, uh, five ways really quick tonight and I broke it down into the five S's, and that's simple because uh, kind of stick in your mind. So, um, the running stats here, really simple. 80% of all runners get injured every year, no matter what. Um, and that's been happening now for the last five years. Um, <clears throat> and, and it looks like it's actually going up and not down. So, um, why is that happening? It's pretty simple. Um, it's due to technique. So a very high percentage of these, 75 to 85 percent of all runners, get injured from poor running technique. Okay. So this is the biggest influence on chronic injury rates today. Um, if you if you look at anything out there, um, it's not not the shoes. It's part of it. It's uh, you know, not uh, I can't say how much they're doing, but it really is. But basically, it's the it's their technique, and that's the biggest reason why runners are getting injured. And so, when they go into a running store, or or they go to their physiotherapist, and they're putting in orthotics, or they're you know putting in a knee brace, they're just patching over and giving them a band aid on the injury, and it's just no good. So, learn how to run again. So the five S's that we're going to break it down to tonight, and we try and keep it as simple as we can here, except running, um, is we try and keep it as basic and, and as easy as we can for everybody to learn, and as learn as, as easy as you can, and hopefully you understand my uh, <clears throat> American English accent. So um, one is strengthen, and we'll go over that as strengthen uh, kind of the parts of the body that um, that will help you stay injury free. Uh, two stance, 
<laughs> and uh, this is crucial to our technique. Uh, our posture has to stay constant throughout. Uh, three is our, our strike. I'm sure you've heard it all before. Um, you know, if you haven't, but basically it's you know where where we're looking to strike our foot and what's the best part of the foot to land on, etc. Um, number four, excuse me, uh, shoes. <clears throat> how how can shoes hurt you? Uh, how can how can shoes cure injuries? Uh, and is there a best fit? Um, stuff like that. We can learn about shoes, the retail side of it as well. And coming from a background like that is very interesting. Um, and the skill, a broad topic that we will cover for a whole technique of running. So you know, there's so much to go over, and we'll try and, uh, <clears throat> like I say, not keep it too brief, but also. Uh, understand that there's, there's so much to go over on this. We could last forever talking about it, but um, the, the skill the skill part is, is so broad that you know we want to keep it down to the, the nitty and gritty of it. So um, and just a note on this as well is that you know there is no time frame for any of this. Um, one of the main questions I always get is uh, you know how long is this going to take me? Is it going to take me one week? Is it going to take me a certain amount of days? And, and everyone is different. That's what we have to understand out there. And uh, what makes one person, you know, take one person a month may take another six months. Uh, so listen to your body, uh, and if it's done right, it will change your running life. I can guarantee that. It's, I've done it myself, and I, I've helped thousands of other people, you know, push that way. And, and as long as again they they take the time, listen to their body, and and do it correctly, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't uh, go on and and have a healthy Happy running life. So, so let's move on to number one: <laughs> strengthen. Um, and by the way, uh, you, you know you you can type in any questions, uh, and Anthony hopefully will be able to answer some of them. If you want to put some questions in in the little box down there, and uh, and we'll be doing a question and answer at the end as well. So, um, strength exercises for your feet. Strength exercises. Put that in there twice. Sorry about that. Core, core strength and calf strength. Okay. Um, basically, what we need to do is strengthen our whole body, um, and the changes uh, you make when you strengthen your body will, you know, you'll make your strength to your running. So your body will have to slowly adapt to this. This need, this means that we need to strengthen the parts of our body that we have not been using for a long, long time. Most important. Really, of the of the parts of the body that we need to strengthen is the foot. The foot is is so key to to everything that we need to uh, to start again with because you know you you that's exactly what we're landing on. So much pressure goes on to that part of the foot. Uh, it, it's incredible, you know, the amount of loading and unloading pressure that goes on to your foot. That you know, it's it's really uh, it's not surprising how many people get injured every single day, every single year. When you know they're not doing it correctly, it's really not surprising at all. So, um, looks like we just got another person coming in. Welcome. Um, lost my place there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and you know, if you uh, if you think you're running well, you really need to take a look in the mirror. You know, um, just ask yourself if you're happy. If you're happy, you're running as a whole. You know, your technique, your times, your recovery, recovery. You know, your, your most of all your injuries. You know. Most of the times we can get little niggles that will often lead to, you know, much bigger issues. You know, so we need to reevaluate our way of thinking, you know, when we run and learn that our bodies are meant to run and not get injured. You know, we were we were born to run. The book is right. We were born to run, um, and so you know we weren't born to, to to run poorly and get injured and go and see you know doctors. So we were born to just run away and have fun with it with a smile on our face. So, you know, when I watch, I've got two kids and I watch my five-year-old run, it's unbelievable. She's just, uh, she's faster than I am, I think, already. So, and she's just smiling away and, and just, I film her and she's, <laughs> she's, she looks perfect. It's crazy. So, if we can go back to that and keep it going through, that's perfect. So, um, our feet are so strong, you know, so going back to the strength of our feet, our feet are so strong, yet we do not treat them well, you know, and, uh, and injuries can come very quickly when we have very weak feet. And one of the main questions I get is, uh, you know, is that 
you know, how long will it take for my feet to get strong, etc., and my calves, are they supple enough to do this? You know, and like I said earlier, there is no there is no right answer. It's totally different for every individual, you know, and uh, and so we just have to learn in different ways and uh, we'll pick up faster than others. So one technique um, to make your, your 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 feet stronger is uh, so is one I learned off of Lee a long time ago is uh, called toga. And uh, we, we try to coin the phrase and catch the phrase. Uh, it's basically yoga for your toes. Um, and it's, it's a technique of using our toes in the stretches and strength building exercises to help them develop and maintain our foot's proper you know, form, so to speak. It's amazing how many people I come across that not even bend their toes, you can't even bend their toes you know, uh, towards their, the sole of their foot. Uh, they can't even spread their toes. Um, can't manipulate them to gain strength in their muscles and joints, you know. So um, it, it's it's a it's a great starting point to 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 look to work on your toes and and, and understand the toga situation. Um, easy ones are are bending the the four smaller toes underneath, keeping the big toe as high as possibly can. This will really stretch out the plantar fascia joints there, and you know plantar fasciitis one of the main and you know, very common injuries among runners, and you know this can be reared real quickly with a foot strengthening, and foot stretching exercises. You know, like toga. Uh, another one where you can, you know, instead of putting the four, um, the four smaller toes down, you can bring them up and leave the the big toe down. And pushing that down is as hard as possibly can be. And so if you're if you're there right now, you know. Figure out pushing that big toe down as hard as you can on the ground. Lifting the other four up is kind of tough for some people. And if you're good at it, that's great. It just strengthens your foot again and again and again. Um, figure out how to uh, how you can get up off the floor by just using your toes. It's an interesting way. Um, if you're on your knees, if you can get on your knees and, and just push up off your toes, no arms included. You know, don't push off your hands. You know, you're strengthening your feet. Just little exercises like that will really strengthen your feet, really strengthen your toes and your metatarsals. And it's such a big, big vital part of uh, of how we run. It really is. And, and we go on about you know where you should be landing, etc., and why this is such a big part of it. You know, so um, you know, going back to like the plantar fasciitis, you know. Medical world has a pretty good hold on you know how to get rid of this injury, but you know what's the point? What's the point of getting it? And what's the point of getting this injury at all? What's the point of getting any injury at all? You know when we can avoid it and just uh, and never get injured. So that's the whole point of tonight. So if you can change your habits, strengthen your feet, you know your foot will become stronger over time, you know, and these injuries will never happen. So. Um, more quick, uh, make quick, uh, sorry, quick injuries that uh, happen quite often with uh, really uh, not very strong feet are Achilles tendon tears, metatarsal cracks. Uh, think about it: arch pains and strains, post hip tendonitis. I've worked with uh, heel spurs and pain. Uh, Morton's foot, that's a huge one. Bunyan's hammer toe. You know the list goes on, and uh, a lot of it comes through uh, just again weak feet. Um, if you if <laughs> again I've learned this off of the guys, but how how can you check for Morton's foot uh, without going to the doctor? It's very easy. Do it yourself. Do it with a partner. Um, if you lie down flat on your back, get your partner to uh, get your hand and kind of knuckles underneath your metatarsals from your sole and bend those four little toes down towards the ground as hard as can be. You know, and it's it's going to be a stretch for some people. But you just have to push down as hard as you can, and you'll find your metatarsal heads poking out. All right, you're not going to snap them. Don't worry. And what you're going to find is you're going to have a, a line of metatarsals. If you see the second metatarsal above, so towards the toes, nails, and that's above the first metatarsal, which is your uh, your, your big toe. Simple enough. You've got Mark Morton's foot, and it's a real big um, common. Uh, injury, well, it's not an injury so to speak, but it's a problem because it leads to so many more 
injuries in the future. Um, huge one like bunions, you know, and where do we get Morton's foot from? It really comes from uh, what the, uh, it's really come from the, I'm going to say, the social world nowadays of, you know, what we're wrapping in our feet, etc., and and what we've got to, what we've got to put in, you know, for, for work or, or for even when we're running, you know, we're, we're told what to run in. So um, it really, it, it's, it's an easy to get rid of. Uh, if you're just doing those exercises, if you can actually pull your toes out certain ways, um, I wish I could show you on a video. I don't have it here today, but you know you can manipulate your your own metatarsals and pull your toes certain certain ways so that uh, you know you can actually get rid of Morton's toe, uh, Morton's foot after after a while, and you know Morton's foot will lead to things like bunions and. Man, have I seen some big bunions in my teen time? You know, as I've seen some bunions in women as as big as golf balls. You know, and so and they start from Morton's foot. But um, so you know, bunions can be healed um, with again with the exercises. See so many uh, when I was in the retail store, saw so many women come in with bunions, and you know, men as well, but more women because they wore a lot of high heels. They, they shoved their toes into the, the stilettos with the the, the pointy. Um, Pointing toes at the end. <laughs> I don't think I've worn them before, so I don't know. But uh, they, uh, they, they, they would come in. They have bunions the size of uh, golf balls, like I said, and uh, and there was there's really no way back from that except for probably surgery. And I and then there was only a couple that I hated to say that, you know. But the rest, you know, you just work with them over time, and and you can get rid of them. So. Um, and, and moving on. Uh, is there any other exercises out there for uh, for your feet? There's loads, you know, but uh, I would recommend just kind of looking at, um, you know, even going to YouTube, see if there's any, you know, exercises on feet that would uh, help you out. We'll be doing a YouTube station pretty here soon that we'll, we'll give, a, you know, hopefully some of these exercises out, etc. But, uh, you know, the feet are important, the, the most important. So let's, let's let's make them stronger. If you don't, you're going to get injured straight away. So. Uh, core strength. Moving on to that is is another uh, another big problem for runners. Uh, lack of core strength will often lead to so many injuries. And again, it doesn't have to be you know right around the core, but it's 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 the um, it's the axes of our body. So anything that you know we have a weak core with, you know, it could be the hamstrings, the calves can lead up you know through the spine, through your hips. Um, anything that we have a uh, you know poor core strength, we're really going to struggle on, on the pounding that we have when we're having a, you know, a bad technique when it comes to running. So um, there's plenty of exercises out there for, for core strength. I'm not going to go over them because that just lasts forever. Um, <clears throat> and if you, if you, again, if you, if you don't know them, just look online. such a wide world out there now that you can look online and get anything. So um, but make sure that when you're looking online for these uh, for these exercises, or if you're speaking to someone, or you're uh, going to the retail store, or running store, if you're going to a physiotherapist, you, you understand that what your um, individual job is to do is to get them to give you exercises for your running experience. It's not for them just to give you a core exercise. It's not for them to give you a foot exercise. It's for them to give you an exercise to enhance your running experience. So if they're telling you to go swim, that's you know that's it's not the best. You know what's the point of swimming? That's not going to help you when you're running. Okay. Um, so basically, if anyone's ever telling you to do something that's you know kind of out of the norm and it doesn't you know go towards the sport you're looking to do and then you know it's not going to enhance your experience and it's probably going to you know weaken certain muscles as well and, and again you're going to get injured from it so make sure that people know this stuff and uh, and and make sure that they're giving you a certain specific goal towards running okay so and that is all I think I have to say about that and the calf um, at the end there. You know, when it comes when it comes to uh, strengthening our calves and, and how much change we're going to have in our calves, um, it's going to be quite substantial in the in the first few weeks, first few months. If you know, depending on the person, etc. Um, 
again, there's ways around that. There's stretches. There's there's exercises. Again, that um, we'll see and do, but uh, it's not that significant, so we won't go on to it too much. Okay, uh, the stance here. Um, I named it stance just because of the four S's. <laughs> um, but really, you know, the posture is the uh, is the first thing uh, we should develop when changing our running technique. Um, so if you've ever had coaching, if you ever, um, if you ever, even you know, gone outside and, and looked in the mirror. Sorry, I've got some things popping up here. <laughs> um, a posture is, is huge, and uh, I got taught that um, by by I don't know uh, by Lee again, and it's it's the hip positioning is key when we're learning to stand. Uh, in the skill section, we'll go over that real quick. The skill of a basic standing. Um, but anything we need to go, we need to go for backward properly. Um, until you can really have someone look at you and see yourself on video, then you'll realize the mistakes you're making. Um, we have to be open to the fact that you can learn again. Understand that it will take time, but it's better than running injured. Okay. Um, so, you know, understand that the. Uh, the posture is is the, the very first thing, you know, that, that comes from from our technique here, um, and, and understand that we have to change our minds, you know, when it when it comes to our bad habits, you know. So getting someone to video you, getting someone to look at you, uh, getting someone to really critique every little you know nut and cranny on your on your on your uh, on your body there, and understand that you know that you are not as good as you were. Then, then you're on the way. Um, I've got the squat at the bottom there simply because it's very, very important. Um, you know, why is it important? The squat is uh, is a great way to help your your posture and your stance uh, as an exercise to start with. But it's also, you know, why why is uh, let's, let's rephrase that. You know, we were born to squat, just like we were born to run. We were born to squat. Um, you know, we weren't born to sit on chairs. And the, you know, the less we squat, the less you know, the more we're weakening, you know, the correct muscles and joints we need for running. Uh, when done correctly, the squat plantar pressure is the same as the correct runner's plantar pressure. Um, so try squatting with a bar above your head in a deep squat. Um, you know, build the weight very, very slowly. This will help your uh, dorsiflexion. Uh, it will help uh, build muscles. Okay. It will build strength, power, and also flexibility in your whole of your body. Okay, so that's why squats are really, really important, and uh, you should do them every day, okay, as much as you can. Uh, moving on, getting told to move on fast here. <laughs> um, a strike. Uh, you know, a huge percentage uh, of um, of what I coach nowadays. Uh, are runners who have been kind of changed by listening to wrong people, or have read books, etc., or watch videos, and and you know, and I'm just trying to get them away from their bad habits, or you know, or being coached poorly, and uh, or just being not coached at all, like I said, and they uh, they're trying to learn themselves, and that's fine. But really, realistically, at the end of the day, like I just said, you need someone to watch you. You need someone. You need to look at yourself on video. It's such a such a big come down to earth, really, you know, and so, um, you know, and then the medical world's learning it. So, uh, the coaching has to be better, you know, and if it's not done correctly, you know, and then uh, injury can really happen at any time. So, uh, a lot of been made about um, where we should strike when we're where we're landing, um, and simply put, it's on the forefoot. Uh, Anyone that tells you otherwise is wrong. Uh, we sometimes end up, you know, we land flat, which is what they would call the midfoot. Um, we call the midfoot strike, but this happens pretty rarely. And so when you hear someone say, yeah, I'm a midfoot striker, you know, quite honest, they don't know what they're on about too much, or they'll know what they're on about, but they, you know, they're, they haven't been taught very well. So, you know, we should be landing on our forefoot. Like I said, you know, we can get lazy and we can land on our midfoot. But you know, we should not be landing on our heels. It's simple enough. And the next slide will show you exactly why, you know, we should not be landing on our heels. Um, we'll go over that in a second, obviously. 
Uh, you will hear the term uh, general center of mass quite often in the running world and uh, GCM for all you uh, Americanized people out there. And there's a point of our body that is, you know, the axis of our point. You know, we, 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 we lean, we can tilt, we move, we tip, you know, from this point. So it's important to understand how this can affect your running and how injuries can occur from this, you know. So general center of mass, when people talk about that, it's, uh, it's, it's quite important. So we're, again, we'll talk about that in a second. Next slide. Um, you know, should we stride long? Should we stride with choppy strides? Should is there a way? Is there is there a way that everyone should do it the same? Um, I don't know. Well, I do know. But uh, again, next slide, <laughs> and uh, it's it's it all comes together. So, um, and the last part is cadence. Uh, for those who don't know, um, you know, cadence is uh, the the speed of how many strides we take in a second or in a minute. So. If you're taking, you know, three uh, three steps per second, um, that's uh, 180 steps per uh, per minute. So that's that's cadence. If you didn't know that, and uh, and that's a nice part of uh, the next slide as well. So um, what we have to remember in the next slide, though, you know, is if done correctly, you know, we're just going to be swapping one injury for another. Okay. So here is. Um, Here's a slide given me by, by Lee uh, from Bebo Beth, but excuse me, I'm gonna have a drink here, and uh, and this will show uh, we go from left to right. The guy on the left is a hill striker. The guy in the middle is the uh, is the poor barefoot runner or poor runner, <laughs> and the guy on the right hand side is the uh, is the skilled skill runner so um, we're going to spend a little bit of time on this slide and, uh, and understand what each of these uh, diagrams and and uh, the planner pressures and, you know, and make sure that you understand why all this here is uh, very important to look at so the Harvard research team uh, Daniel Lieberman if you haven't heard of him uh, you can look it up he's, he's an amazing guy very very clever guy and uh, he, he does a lot of uh, research on runners and um, come to conclude that uh, hill, strike, hill strike runners are twice as likely to get injured compared to forfeit strikers. Um, you know, and, and when that came out, you know, pretty big, uh, pretty good statement to make. And, and then the book Born the Run came out and everybody, you know, was jumping on the, uh, the barefoot bandwagon expecting to run like a Taramara. You know, but instead, what we saw was uh, was you know people coming from from this running from from this uh, what can we say uh, <laughs> funny looking uh, person to uh, and they and they went and learnt themselves and, and and taught themselves and and learnt how to do this. So what they're doing here is they're just swapping one injury. Mostly they would be injured hip area, knee area. Um, a lot of runners' knees, you know, a lot of pain in the ankles, a lot of hip displacements, okay, um, a lot of pain in the back with the, the first runner, and they would teach themselves. They would, you know, maybe watch some video, etc. But they're just swapping this injury, and they were swapping injuries for lower in the leg now, and you're seeing a lot more, like I said, calf injuries, uh, shin splints. A lot of plantar fascia injuries, you know, we talk about them all just now. Um, so just swapping one injury for another injury, okay? What we need to do is get to, to the third guy by listening to, to you know, <clears throat> experienced coaches and then knowing what they're doing and, and you'll stay injury free. So if you look down at the, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at the screen. <laughs> if you look down at the, the left hand side here, it says uh, plantar pressure. Um, what you'll see there is a 3D graph of where the strike patterns happen and then the main and the mean strike uh, of the landing foot. So here on the on the heel striker of the first guy, um, a huge amount of pressure on the landing foot and the heel here. A um, little bit on the uh, on the on the forefoot, on the outside of the forefoot, and that's key too. And then also a tiny little bit because he's springing off with his toe. Um, 
on the middle guy, you know, smacking down on the forefoot, but it's, uh, if I can just move this, yes I can, um, it's on the outside uh, because he's overstretching, he's landing, this is our general center of mass is what we talked about just now, okay, this is our axis point, he's landing so far out in front of his uh, general center of mass that the pressure is, is, is too much for his foot. And so it's it's making it go over to the wrong side, all right. And hardly any on the big toe again. Okay. Uh, when we're looking at the the plantar pressure of the the skilled runner here, correct. Uh, this is where we should be having our most pressure. Okay. Coming off on the on the big toe, just in front of the general center of mass. When people uh, say you should land under the general center of mass, again they're wrong. It's pretty impossible to do. Um, well, it's not impossible, but you're going to end up falling. So <laughs> if you want to do that, go ahead. But I would recommend landing just out in front of yourself, tiny little bit. <clears throat> and again, that's very hard to do. But you go back up to the general body posture, general center of mass. You can see his spine, his head looking forward on the first guy. Long trailing leg hanging out, overstriding, land on the hill. Okay, you can also see shoulders which means he's twisting his, uh, his hips when he's running. So if you, if you go out for a run later, you find yourself over striding, you'll find yourself twisting your hips, which means your shoulders will follow wherever your hips do. Okay, what this guy is doing here, again, bad uh, body posture. Okay, he's leaning from the hips, leaning from the shoulders there, head still pointing forward where, you know, he's trying to look for his feet. Okay, again, a long overstride on the back, okay, trailing leg, which is really poor to do. Uh, we don't need to use those muscles, no point. And again, landing too far out in front, putting excess pressure on the wrong points of the foot, okay. What we see on the third guy is a great posture, and that's what we're looking for, that stance. Okay, the head and neck and the shoulders all aligned, okay, can't see uh, that twist anymore. Um, that landing perfectly. No trailing leg hanging out, it's just a smooth stride, okay? And if you look at, you know, that up and down there and that up and down, you're just looking for a smooth, you can put that water on top of your head and it won't spill. So if you look at the, the graphs on the, on the bottom here, um, this is our, this is what um, Harvard came out with. Um, and basically, this blip here, hopefully you can see my arrow as I'm as I'm uh, doing this. Anthony, can you see what I'm doing with that arrow? I guess. Yeah, we can see it just fine. <laughs> uh, this is our force and body weight when we're striking the ground. Okay, so this point here with the with the old hill striker guy, this here is what we call an impact transient this point right here okay so if you look at this one compared to this one compared to this one you know we're looking at a huge difference between the three all right and this is what Harvard and Daniel Lieberman and his team okay says is the reason that runners are getting injured more now than ever okay because of the forces running through the body because of this impact transient right here okay so you're putting between two and three times, sometimes higher, much body weight on every single stride. And this impact transient is what is causing okay, us to get injured. And it's still here on this one, even though you're landing on your forefoot, there's still an impact transient because you're doing it wrong. You're landing out in front of yourself. Your, your, your general center of mass is wrong. Your posture is wrong. Your training leg is wrong. You know, you're putting your, your masses of if your body weight on certain points that just can't bear it and so we're looking at this smooth arch you know nature loves a smooth arch as they say so um, it's uh, you cannot dispute the fact that uh, that is wrong so moving on mm. <laughs> hopefully you like that one shoes number four I'm nearly there uh, let me just work on this. <laughs> yes, we can. Shoes. 
I know a lot about shoes. I have more shoes than uh, my wife, which is sad to say. Uh, I think I have 50 unopened pairs in my closet right now. So, um, but I guess I never ever buy a pair again. So that's good. Uh, but I, I know I know a lot about shoes. I know a lot about you know how to fit a person and, and what types of shoes you know different people should be wearing, etc. And uh, and after working at a, a retailer for so long, uh, it's definitely uh, an interesting inside point of view, you know. So um, the fit is is pretty big. Uh, getting someone to fit you correctly is key. Uh, having the correct amount of room inside a shoe is vital. Uh, you're looking for a centimeter at the top uh, by your toes. Uh, some shoes, obviously, you know, are, are pointed in different directions at the uh, at the forefoot there, and some are wider and, and some are narrow. Um, you know, but at least if if you go in for something and you can't get anything else, at least have you know that centimeter at the top because when you run, your foot will slide forward enough that. If your shoes too tight, you're gonna you're gonna snap your toes. You know, you snap your toenails. You're gonna then break your metatarsals because your toes are meant to slide around and move around when you're running. All right, simple enough. So, uh, get a shoe that is right, you know, for your job. What I mean by that, you know, if you're running trails, get a trail shoe. If you're running road, get a road shoe. Vice versa, um, and get a and get the right fit for your foot. You know, don't buy a shoe just because of the marketing. Don't buy a shoe because the shop says it's the one, and you know, and, and they're just they've only got a few to choose from. Understand why you need a certain shoe for you. Um, too many retailers out there just you know will, will will like a certain shoe because it sells well, etc. Do your research um, and, and and make sure you know it's right. And if it's not right and you try it out. You know, make sure you understand the return policy as well. We've had some problems uh, in the past. Uh, understand that, and, and, and understand that. You know, if you if you buy a car, you try it out. If you're buying a shoe, try it out. Keep trying it out. You know, so the fit is very, very key. Uh, getting down to earth. Uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, you know these these huge shoes nowadays that would uh, would come along. These motion control shoes uh, with huge. Uh, Hill to four foot and hill to four foot. Uh, I forgot the words now. Is uh, <laughs> you know they would have 12 millimeters of separation between your hill and sometimes 15 millimeters. It's crazy, you know. You you, you shouldn't really be anything in uh, more than a four mil in my in my uh, humble opinion. Um, you should be really you know trying to get as much zero drop as you can, but the the big question is, is uh, you know, how how long does it take to go down? You know, do we slowly build our way down to you know as low as we can go, or do we uh, go straight down there? Um, so really, there's two ways of doing it for me. Uh, if you're looking to take your time, you know, then slowly take your time. And, and if you're in a 12 millimeter shoe right now, fine, take your time, go down to a nine, take your time, go down to a six, um, and it just it just Will you know stretch your stretch your muscles out in a different way? It's that simple. Uh, it'll build your your feet slowly, which is nice. And then you know if you go straight down to <clears throat> you know a minimalist shoe, and it's right down there, then um, then that's fine as well. But understand that you have to build your your miles or or your strength up really really slowly. You know, so there's kind of a a real two two uh, way curve there and there is no again right or wrong answer for either, but um, the the one main common aspect there is that you need to be getting as low as you can, and uh, and, and building your your strength up each each time. So, um, like I said, no one no right or wrong for anybody. Everyone's different. So, just get away from your motion control shoes, your pronating shoes, your supinating shoes, whatever it may be, your still stability shoes. Um, and again, not running in none of the shoes ain't for everybody, and that's fine. Um, you know, but if it's done correctly and you take your time, it'll be a great benefit to you in your life. So, um, you know, if you if you try running uh, barefoot on concrete, you know, what's your change between wearing built-up shoes and and uh, and in uh, the minimalist shoes? You know, this isn't a this isn't a like a minimalist shoe. Uh, <laughs> 
spur on here I don't work for anybody so uh, you know but if you look at all the you know the major sports out there it requires you know balance or you know they, they're done with little or no footwear at all you know look at gymnastics boxing martial arts of all kinds weightlifting surfing wakeboarding fencing rock climbing you know they're all done with little or no footwear and uh, there's a reason because of that and uh, you try any of the above sports with uh, with modern built-up footwear and you'll feel the difference straight away so again if you uh, if you if you're doing it wrong though you're just changing one injury for the next injury it's that simple so uh, and again choose your, your retailer uh, wisely um, make sure they have experience make sure they have a wide variety of shoes Make sure the people that is working with you treats you like the king or queen you should be treated with. You know, um, the customer experience should be amazing. You should go in there and walk out that, you know, that you're happy that you haven't just bought a pair of running shoes. Is that you just had a great experience and you're gonna understand that you know the reason why they put you in that shoe, not just because they bought a shoe. You know, so um, make sure you, you choose wisely when it comes to the experience of your retailer. We can tell you all about that. <laughs> all right, last thing, skill is, uh, and then we're going to bring out to him. Um, is uh, it's, again probably the most important thing of everything we've ever done. Uh, skill is everything we do. Uh, what you're doing right now is probably a skill. I should say I'm standing up doing this, but I'm not. <laughs> and uh, you know. That's a skill. Um, when we were, as soon as when we were born, uh, we we try to learn so much. You know, we learn so many skills, and uh, and we fall down, we get back up. We fall down, we get back up. And over time, you know, we break down each skill into a micro skill. You know, so running, you know, running is a skill, uh, and it's a technique. So make sure you you know you understand that. For, 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 if you've got anything from this, understand that this is a skill. You know, so running is the same as anything else. It's uh, it's a sport, and you know, think about uh, in sport where we're taught how to swim, taught how to jump, kick, head, catch. You know, uh, anything we do in any kind of sport and area, uh, we're, we're taught how to do. You know, everyone says, "Oh, you got to learn this skill." You know, so so why not be taught how to run? Uh, so, saying for swimming, for instance, you know, we learn how to. To breathe in through your mouth, out through your nose, roll the body, you know, not the head, and so on. So, you know, if you look at, uh, I don't want to go on real quick here, but if you watch Sun Yang of China, he's the 1500 meter uh, Olympic medalist, a gold medalist uh, from the last Olympics in, uh, in London. If you want to learn how to swim long distance, watch that guy. Absolutely amazing. Sun Yang. Watch, uh, watch some YouTube videos of that guy. If you want to learn, you know, the most amazing technique of swimming that's the guy and then if you want to watch a, a guy on short distance swimming you know 50 100 meters watch Alex Popov an old Russian swimmer you know amazing you know their technique was so so good and it was because of their coaches the coaches broke down each aspect of their stroke you know they worked on the micro skills and the macro skill being the end product was amazing flawless technique and in the end they won gold medal after gold medal and also broke world record after world record. So, you know, um, that's in swimming. In running, you can look, you know, no further than Eugene Bolt and Michael Johnson in the sprints. Eugene Bolt right now, you know, fastest ever guy, but his technique is flawless, you know. And Michael Johnson, old 200, uh, 400 meter world record holder, amazing, amazing technique. And uh, it's, it's funny listening to old uh, TV presenters would you know say like you know Michael Johnson if only he had better technique he would run faster <laughs> they just didn't understand the, the concept of how to run I guess so, um, and you look at uh, over long distances uh, highly Gabri Selesi unbelievable when it comes down to technique just completely superior than anybody else so um, these guys if you if you want to learn a little bit you know watch from the best sometimes you know um, but we need to break down the skill of running and learn the basics so break down the skills into a micro skill. So if uh, you know if running is our skill, we need to break it down into standing, walking, running, and sprinting. You know, and we can learn how to do all that again. And uh, it is simple to do. 
So, um, one one side note: if you can get to a <clears throat> if you can get to a store with a plantar pressure plate, um, or physiotherapist sometimes has them, you know, plantar pressure plates, and this will give you a real good analysis on how you stand and how you walk and run. And it really gives you a good feedback on uh, on, on on basically your, your basics and, and how we stand is is really important and why uh, why if we stand incorrectly and if we walk incorrectly how how big of an impact it is of when we run. So that's about all I have for now. Um, sorry uh, I babbled on. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too hard for you guys to listen to. Um, I appreciate everybody coming in. We, uh, I think Anthony's going to come in in a second here, and we've got some questions and answers at the end. So um, please feel free to shoot away. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Andy. Um, I'm just going to move the move the uh, the slide forward here. Um, if you could just do that for me. Um, cool. that we we have a we had a couple questions that that came through, and uh, before we get to uh, question and answer. Um, the, one of the questions was about coaching. Um, that was exactly what we're going to go into next. Um, uh, taking this to the next level. If this is something that you enjoy, this is probably not for everybody, but if it's something that, if you enjoy this information and, uh, improving your running form and, uh, improving your running times and just the enjoyment of running is important to you. Uh, what we created XF running for was to be able to get this information out there and also to, uh, coach people personally to do this. So uh, we, we've actually just gotten started within the last few months, and we're going to be offering our first ever uh, summer running boot camp. I think it's on the next slide there. Andy, you just go to the next one. There we go. And, and so there's more down. If you go to xfrunning.com slash boot camp, that's got more of the details. But uh, it is going to be uh, working personally with uh, myself and, and Andy mostly to do uh, with over the phone uh, to do a video analysis of how you run, which is uh, something that we've done many times. And uh, it's probably one of the most helpful things in improving your ability to run. And you mentioned that during uh, earlier, Andy, that if you film yourself, it's just you can't it, the, the video doesn't lie. You think that you're running a certain way, you know, you think you're like this gazelle just, you know, bouncing on the road and then you see the video and you're like, who is that? So we we look at your your video and we we analyze it for you um, when the boot camp starts, boot camps for four weeks. And we'll we'll immediately tell you here. We'll we'll, we'll send it back to you with some uh, pointers and exactly showing you what you can do. And at the end of the four weeks, we'll do it again. And uh, we will will be able to show you how much you've improved. And so that alone is a, a huge way to improve. Uh, beyond that, once a week for four weeks, we're going to be offering um, more of this education. So our goal by the end of four weeks is for you to be able to know how to run correctly so you're, you're not very likely at all to get injured and uh, you're able to recover from any injuries. And it's pretty much your understanding of running is handled for life. It's something that you you learn how to run correctly and it's not something you need to worry about. As a matter of fact, uh, we have, the other people we've worked with have told us that they are, their running has changed so much that their friends have often asked them for coaching. And so they go out for a run with their friends and their friends say, can you show me how to do that? And so they end up coaching people. So that's kind of what we're trying to do to get this information out there. Um, as a part of that, we also offer email support and, um, and uh, the, the last part is, with the phone consultation with Andy, uh, two half hour sessions over the month. And that includes uh, a specially tailored running program just for you uh, because everybody's, everybody's body is different and everybody has different goals and needs and foot, size, uh, foot shapes and sizes. And so he'll go over uh, creating a special plan for you as well as uh, helping you choose the right shoes that are for you because depending on where you're at, uh, maybe a minimal shoe makes sense or maybe a transition shoe makes sense. It depends on what your goals are and, and where you're at. So that whole offer is uh, it, it, to, to join that. It starts in uh, a week from next Monday or two weeks from yesterday. Um, and uh, it is, it, it's going to be $197 for the entire month, which uh, Andy and I were talking about beforehand. We think we're really happy that, that that's what we're starting out with because 
that's actually a really good deal. Andy's an hour of Andy's time to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session is $150. And so this is going to cover way more than that and uh, is going to have the video analysis and going to have a lot more education and is going to, um, and is only a, a bit more. So 197. So for more details on that, go to xfrunning.com slash bootcamp. Um, and uh, I think we're ready to do some Q&A here, Andy. All right. So I've got a question here about running sandals. And we got, we've got about five minutes left, but um, what? What, what, uh, what sandals are they specifically? They didn't say, but um, they're they're they just said, what what do you think about running sandals? I have uh, I wore them today. <laughs> uh, I had a pair of lunas on. If you're on about the lunar sandals, fantastic, uh, the best you can get. Um, there's there's two companies you can go for. There's either the lunar sandal, um, which have three new sandals out right now. I know Ted very very well. Um, and he said to me the other day that um, it, as long as you're on about these, by the way, um, I guess because there's only two ones out there that I would go for, um, and that's the Luna sandal and the Invisible sandal, or the Zero shoes they call them now. He changed uh, his name from uh, Invisible to Zero shoes, uh, but the Luna sandal, you know, a little bit more expensive. We'll start at seventy-five dollars up to a hundred. Um, they have three different ones: the Mono, the Venado, and my Spanish isn't that good. It's the bear. Is it bear, the deer? The monkey? Oh, I can't remember. They've got three out, and and they're different. Uh, different levels of hypes. Um, and one of them, the I think the mono has the uh, the grip for the trails, etc. But the venado actually has a deer skin on it right now, and it's so nice. Soaks up the moisture very well. Um, and I love running them. I love walking around with them. I, you know, I even I wear them as much as I can. In in Seattle, that's you know not very often, but anywhere I go, the sun. I went down to California a couple of weeks ago and spent the entire week in the sandal, you know, the lunar sandal. I also do use the uh, the zero shoes, the invisible sandal. Um, obviously, a lot cheaper, twenty bucks or something, twenty five bucks. You can either make it yourself or you can um, you can uh, order order online. Or they can make it for you, but um, you know they, they were nice. Actually, they were really comfortable. Very, very low to the ground. Hardly anything underneath you, like three millimeters, and the other ones uh, five or six millimeters or something. But um, you know they're very nice as well. The, the only problem I have with them is that the lace broke. You know, probably within a month and a half of having it. And to be quite honest, I haven't been bothered to uh, to order another one. You know, because it's just a pain. So, um, if you're if you're looking for a cheap option, that is good to go. But I would order probably some extra laces to uh, build because they will snap. Um, if you're looking for the and the problem with those as well is that you have a notch underneath of the forefoot, so you do feel that until it kind of works its way in. Um, if you can get over that, that's fine. But the Luna, you know, it's a top company now. They've, they've really done a good thing. They've, they've built it from scratch. Ted has up in Seattle, up on the hill up there. Um, that's, a, that's about it. But, they, yeah, they're a fantastic sandal, both of them. Okay, and so and another question here just about whether our program is going to cover running for weight loss. What, what, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, running for weight loss? Very easy. Um, you know, I, I, I have... I've done that before with plenty of uh, you know clients and runners. Um, it's it, it you know the, the big thing out there right now is kind of um, how how like you say if we if we can uh, lose weight, it's it, it is simple, um, but again it's a it's a long going process. But you just have to stick with it. Um, simple way you know is just to build the miles and 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 have a plan on on how to eat. Um, and make sure it's again it's it's developed solely for the individual. I know Anthony um, uh, has certain uh, eating habits that I don't, um, <laughs> and we often have make make fun of each other about our you know the way we eat etc. But uh, everybody is an individual, and everybody should have their own certain uh, diet so to speak. I wouldn't believe in diets more more so of uh, 
the individual individualized uh, eating habits and and basically the uh, the the running or the exercise or the movement that comes with that. So we will we can go over that. That's easy enough. Or we can coach that. That's easy enough. You know, and it for me it's really it's. As long as you can give yourself enough time, it's it's easy to uh, get the weight off. It really is. So. Okay. Well, it's seven o'clock now. We've got a few more questions uh, that we're not going to be able to get to. So, I, if, if you if you have a question that you really want us to answer, just email us at info at xfrunning.com or uh, just a general question or a, a question about the boot camp feel free to email us there too yeah and we, we will get back to you you know there's no like we won't get back to you we'll get back to you asap and we appreciate everybody uh on here tonight so all right well thank you guys so much for coming hope you enjoyed it and uh we look forward to uh doing this again soon and uh, we'll talk to you next time thanks anthony